Major League Baseball. Currently two days without a major controversy or scandal. Scratch that, it's now back to zero. So what chaos has baseball been thrust into today? Is it the gambling scandal involving Shohei's translator that won't go away? Could it be tension in the players' union that isn't at bay? Or is it simply the outright disaster that's the A's? No, this situation is one involving men on the mound. Nearly all of them, in fact. Pitchers at the major league level are absolute masters of their craft. Dazzling movement of thousands of RPMs featuring impeccable break on their pitches in near-perfect location without fail. It's part of the reason why batting averages have dropped precipitously over the years. Dominance and greatness at a level we have never seen in the history of the game. A proliferation of arms rivaling that of the Cold War. Weapons of mass destruction on the mound. There's only one major downside. The knife. Tommy John is no longer a fear for teams, it's an expectation. Just like the near-perfect pitches that hitters can't contact, devastating injuries are something that can't be avoided. Look at the past few weeks. Miami's rising star Yuri Perez needs the dreaded namesake. Cleveland Shane Bieber, their ace in a contract year needs it too. Spencer Strider, one of the best starters in baseball, will probably go under for surgery soon due to UCL damage. Garrett Cole's trying his hardest to avoid it, but with trends, it feels more and more inevitable. He'd join Jonathan Loisega on the shelf if that comes to pass. What you're seeing on screen is a list of major league pitchers who have suffered long-term injuries since October of 2022. Yes, this is a massive graveyard that includes more than Tommy John recipients, but we're not even taking minor leaguers into consideration. If you're going off those numbers, there have been over 200 of them in this time. For one surgery. Not even considering shoulders or legs. Even position players deal with it. To be fair, it's a much easier road to recovery, but it leads to a dire crossroads. The arms race is leading to mutually assured destruction. All the commissioners, horses, and men, all the pitch count limits, specialization, training, and nutrition in the world can't stop it. Like a trip to Meister, Yoakum, or James Andrews in the past, it is inevitable. We're in an age where a team can no longer rely on five or six starters. They need about ten. Roughly half of them will fall to injury. And it's only getting worse. 166 players were on the injured list for opening day. Only 34 of them were position players. 80% of IL stints were from men on the mound. Panic has set in for baseball. Yet what if I were to tell you that this isn't a new phenomenon, but one that's been building up for decades? A consequence of the quest for perfecting the human body and building the ultimate pitching machines. I can hear all the boomers in the audience buffing out their chest and proclaiming, Oh, back in the day, pitchers usually threw nine innings and had time to build houses on the side. Yeah, those guys were mostly throwing high 80s. And their training was nowhere near as intense as the modern athlete. Even when I was a kid in the 90s, the likes of Randy Johnson hurling insane high 90s heat were extremely rare. A handful of bullpen arms reached triple digits, but they had the luxury of shorter stints. The average fastball for a starter at the turn of the century was around 90 miles per hour. Now it's jumped to about 95. Seeing 100 plus on the radar as a kid was unique. Now it's far more common. We have guys nowadays hitting 105 miles per hour. It's a quest for speed, and nothing will stand in its way. Over the years, we've learned that velocity can be trained. Modern training can make a high schooler hurl fireballs. The human body is a fascinating machine that can be developed in ways thought impossible. Only things they can't do so? Bones, joints, and ligaments. Like most machines, parts break down over time in constant use. In the pitcher's case, they're throwing arms. The popular issue I've been seeing a lot of argument about is the pitch clock. Oh, the dreaded pitch clock. It's been a boon for baseball, speeding up games by a significant portion, widely praised by the media and fans alike. Now the warts are starting to pop up, mainly enforcing pitchers to throw with less rest in between pitches. And it's the hot topic to blame right now. But is it really at fault? Not entirely. First point, this has been a steadily increasing phenomenon for years. This will be happening regardless of pitch clock or not. While well, an argument can be made that the reduced rest time between pitches is a detriment, it's trying to see a singular tree in an entire forest, placing a short-term scapegoat on a long-term problem. The issue we're seeing now starts when the pitchers are kids. Sports have become so specialized and intricate that players are put through the ringer at a very young age. And it only gets worse over time. You start out as an eight-year-old being introduced to throwing with proper form. Then you get a little older and the throwing regimens get a bit more serious. They start introducing breaking pitches, emphasizing spin rate. Then you get to organize travel leagues, little league, and keep throwing. No time for rest, there's Pony League in high school to train and pitch for. If 
if you're just lucky enough to move on to college or the minor leagues, guess what happens? More throwing. Don't just consider games, think warm-ups, practices, training, drills, private lessons, you name it. And most of that time without a long-term rest period. We're talking about potentially tens of thousands of throws a year in high school and beyond. 13 and 14 year old kids being scouted professionally, throwing 90 plus miles per hour in their mid-teens is almost an expectation. If you aren't hitting high 80s with projectability in high school, you might not get drafted or even recruited creating a cesspool of chaos with younger players. An increasing number of athletes getting Tommy John are no longer in the majors or minors. They're in high school, about a quarter of them in the known database. 95 surgeries were done in a five year span on players younger than 21. Some are going under the knife as young as 14. And it's alarming since the UCL doesn't fully develop until they're 25. Even James Andrews has sounded the alarm about it. It's not one particular issue, the problem is everything. Kids eager to do whatever it takes with parents and coaches that push them past physical limit. And it's an endless quest to throw harder, throw more efficiently, more spin, more degree of movement, more. And there's little for the body to give in the quest for progress. A mass grave of torn ligaments and tendons are merely the cost of improvement. And that's how you get the situation unfolding at the major league level. Years upon years upon years of wear and tear on the arms of these athletes has led to a literal breaking point. Another bitching session between baseball and the players union for roughly the 10,000th time in the last half decade. Pitchers dropping like flies and everyone pointing fingers towards what they think is to blame. So the question being thrown about is how to fix this. My honest answer? I don't know. Ideally, the model would be to pivot to a style like Greg Maddox or Ladder St. Cranky, where velocity is sacrificed for impeccable control and finesse. But that's a very tough ask when most pro batters are trained to destroy anything in the zone that doesn't break. Not to mention with how intense and regimented youth baseball has become, this problem might get worse before there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You have to go upstream to fix this. And considering how cutthroat youth sports can be, there's a better chance at world peace. Besides, if one family decides to limit or control their kids pitching for the sake of health, there will be hundreds willing to usurp him. The quest to get to the major supersedes ligament integrity. There's money and fame on the line. And until you break that, there may be no solution in sight. No matter what investigative groups or recommendations baseball may suggest. It's no longer about which teams have the best rotations that compete for championships. It's which ones can survive the longest. In 2023, over a third of pitchers in the majors had Tommy John at some point in their career. Just less than a decade ago, it was a quarter of them. And this number will keep creeping up. You have 1,450 innings to pitch in a season. How do you manage it with all this attrition? Baseball has been perfecting the art of pitching for years, emphasizing the powers of science and technology to create the best arms the sport has ever seen. An arsenal of power assembled as if in a factory. And the only thing holding them back are the limitations of the human body. Until there's a way where titanium can be infused into ligaments and tendons, this issue will continue to manifest in most players that reach even the minor leagues. Take Paul Skeens. He'll be a fantastic pitcher for the Pirates, but I'm merely waiting for the moment when he'll need Tommy John in the next few years. I've already accepted it. It's become part and parcel, and it's simply because of the way baseball is approached. The age-old ethics question comes to mind. Health or perfection? Sacrifices have to be made for excellence. Is it worth the price of admission? That's to the eye of the beholder. And a bouncing ball, headed up the middle, diving stop! Henderson throws it away! The game is over! The Pirates are going to win it! They're going to win it on a wild play at the end! Can you believe it? Henderson, a spectacular stop! Got the one out, then throws it away!